Good day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Today we're going to be having a quick look at the new layout of Adobe Camera Raw. So there was a uh, new release and new version of Adobe Camera Raw that came out uh, very recently and there are some big changes and the changes look really good. So there was certainly a big shift in the layout of, uh, of Adobe Camera Raw and a lot of features that are looking very similar to Lightroom. So. Um, let's have a look at it. So we're just going to start with this image that I photographed in Helsinki in Finland. Um, beautiful, very and crisp and cool winter's morning. Um, so if we just uh, right click on that image and open in Adobe Camera Raw, you can see that uh, it automatically comes up with a um, option there for uh, setting up Camera Raw and the version is 12.3 as you can see. Um, the new ACR default on the left hand side there where you have um, uh, the strip of images at the bottom or um, the vertical film strip and single panels very similar to uh, at least for the vertical film strip of images uh, very similar to the original or the previous version of Adobe Camera Raw. Um, actually before we go any further you will notice that I am using an older version of Bridge. I'm about to update that but for now this is just the version I'm using so um, you can see I have uh, obviously updated uh, Adobe Camera Raw but not Bridge yet so they do uh, talk to each other. If you're uh, happy with the older version of Bridge it will definitely open up in the new version of Raw if you update that software. So let's have a look at the new ACR default um, with the images down the bottom there uh, and because it's new and we want to check out the features. All right, let's go. Okay, so immediate change that you can um, see is that uh, as was requested, which version we wanted to go with, um, actually, let's just go to full screen, just up on the top right hand side there, excellent, um, is that the image, um, obviously I'm only opening one image, but the images are now appearing at the bottom of the screen. You can see you can click and drag to uh, go into full screen or increase the size of that thumbnail at the bottom there. I'm going to go down to fairly small because I don't normally make too many decisions on uh, the actual thumbnail. Uh, obviously, um, um, I'm uh, working on the, uh, the larger version of the file. Uh, you can see that we have the star rating down there, which this image is rated as five stars. It gives us the information about um, the color space, bit depth, uh, pixel dimensions, the megapixel, and obviously our pixels per inch or dots per inch in the uh, old description. All right, let's have a look at the panels. The first thing that you'll probably notice is that there are no tool options on the top toolbar. So all it has is the image file name. Um, up the top here we have our save button, uh, convert and save image. Uh, we have our preference dialog control and obviously our full screen toggle uh, button as well. Uh, if we come down, we've got the uh, histogram in the same position that it was always in uh, with the settings of the image as it was taken. ISO 160, 2470 at 24mm, F8, 1 320th of a second. Now you can see on the right hand side here, we actually have all of these tabs now. So there's no longer um, tabs or options that sit horizontally in a tab bar, uh, but we have all of the tools now listed um, in these drop down boxes, as well as uh, some tools uh, down on the right hand side as well. So let's start with uh, the very far right hand side. So uh, you can see we're in edit mode at the moment. Uh, if we come down, crop and rotate. So that gives us uh, options for obviously cropping and rotating the image. Um, uh, spot removal. Uh, yep, excellent. And we have the adjustment brush. Um, which fundamentally looks like it's exactly the same. Uh, graduated filter, uh, similar again, radio filter, you can see the shortcuts are um, uh, all the same. Uh, red eye removal, snapshots, and presets, excellent, all right, and more image settings. So there, uh, those tabs are a lot of the tabs that used to appear in the top. Um, uh, horizontal on the left hand side of the screen uh, tool options there. If we go back to edit uh, shortcut E uh, which totally makes sense you see we have the uh, color um, profile option there um, uh, we have the auto and black and white mode so if we click auto it's going to give us a bit of an auto um, uh, process or, or start to our edits based on what it believes 
uh, or what the uh, the uh, drivers uh, believe will be the best way to optimize this image. Black and white, obviously fairly self-explanatory. So black and white workflow with a raw image, which is great. Um, all right, let's have a look at basic. So this looks like it's, as the name suggests, this the basic tools. Uh, white balance options there, uh, white balance tool, temperature and tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance and saturation. All looks pretty standard to what the uh, previous version of Adobe Camera Raw had. Let's have a look at curve. Uh, yep, looks all pretty standard. Different um, options to edit the different color channels there. Um, all right, let's close that one up. This feels like it's going to be a fairly efficient um, process of working because you're able to keep your screen a little bit more organized and everything is closer together. All the tools are closer together rather than having to make mouse movements on various parts of um, the screen to access different tools. The closer the tools are, um, uh, hopefully the quicker that's going to be in terms of uh, working with those tools. Now, I'm talking microscopic amounts of time, but if you're editing hundreds or even thousands of images, that microscopic amount of time adds up. Um, and I think you just need to be photographing um, you know, large volumes of images to really appreciate that any gain in workflow efficiency is always appreciated and is always beneficial. All right, detail. Um, excellent, we've got sharpening noise reduction, color noise reduction. Uh, for a more accurate preview, zoom in, zoom the preview size to 100% or larger when adjusting the controls in this panel. So I've actually mentioned that a number of times in videos where you do need to um, zoom into 100%. You can see the 100% scale down here on the bottom left-hand side, similar position to uh, what it was before. And the reason that you want to zoom into 100% at the very least is because you're looking at every pixel within the image. And that just means that you're able to then um, accurately make decisions on what the best amount of sharpening to apply or the best amount of noise reduction to apply so that you can get the best results or the results that you're chasing. Um, so that's just a little reminder. Um, absolutely imperative with sharpening and noise reduction to zoom into 100%. All right, let's close that one down. Color mixer. Yep, looks very similar. So HSL. The only change that we have here is rather than just having hue, saturation, luminance, you have all. So if you click on all, it actually expands all of those dialog, all of those, sorry, tool option boxes. So you can look at them all at once. Otherwise, you can just go back to luminance, saturation, or hue separately, which is a great, uh, great option. Now, um, Little tool here, uh, adjust color um, with color mixer. So you can, uh, uh, so hue, saturation, luminance, and you can work on those specific color channels. So if we go to blue, which there's a lot of blue in this uh, image, you can see that um, with that hue, saturation, and luminance brightness, we have a specific color, or sp sorry, specific control over those specific color channels um, from a HSL perspective. Now, if I reduce that color mixer um, tab, you can see that there's a little eye on the right hand side and now that one is highlighted because that is the only tool that I've actually applied a change and I'm actually just gonna change that so that it's a bit more of a dramatic change. So just for the purposes of uh, demonstrating. Um, so you can see I've made a drastic adjustment to the color of the sky and that little eye icon is now highlighted as opposed to the other ones that haven't because I haven't made any adjustments in those other tabs. So if I click, and it's not a permanent click, it's only click and hold, if I click, it actually shows the version of the photograph without that particular adjustment being applied. So that means you can just go, okay, yep, look, I've probably made a bit of a drastic edit with the color mixer. This is what it's going to look like if I remove that, and um, you can make that decision. Now, if you hold down your Alt key, you can see that it comes up with this reset color mixer, reset for any of those tools. Now, you know, that based on you know, what I just described, that the color mixer is a fairly dramatic. So if I hold down Alt and I want to reset color mixer, then it takes us back to the default starting point with no changes made. So that's a quick and easy way for each of those tools to be adjusted um, or have any adjustments that have been applied removed. 
and it certainly helps to increase your speed and workflow um, by being able to uh, selectively remove any adjustments within those specific tabs. All right, let's go down to split toning. Highlights and shadows looks fairly similar. Optics, remove chromatic aberration. Excellent. All right, we have some changes here with geometry and you can see that you have all of those uh, options for um, transforming the shape of the image uh, so that you can uh, make any perspective adjustments. Um, uh, certainly handy for architectural photographers uh, or anybody who uh, needs to make those adjustments. Um, effects, grain and vignette, so they are... Uh, they are obviously fairly similar to the original version and you can make those adjustments as you need to again with the effect alt and reset effect excellent so calibration you can see you have the options for all of the uh, calibration there all right so looking a little bit further at the crop tool you can see uh, it uh, defaults uh, as soon as you click on the crop tool with the uh, crop dragging points on either side of the image um, and the crop tool is very much behaving uh, similar to Lightroom now uh, and then obviously if you hover over and right click you are able to come up with uh, this little uh, dialog box that gives you all the options so to reset the crop, crop is shot, aspect ratio um, so that filters out into uh, any aspect ratio changes that you want to make rotate aspect ratio so if you're wanting to turn obviously in this case a horizontal image into a vertical image um, uh, yep excellent constraint image so the crop mask there you've got the options there to adjust the opacity um, 20 percent opacity you can see it just gives a little bit of a different view depending on how your eyes work uh, the default is 80 percent obviously uh, which a lot of people will just leave, but uh, the options are there to adjust if you would like to. Uh, excellent. Now with the crop, you also have those angle options. Constraint to image. Excellent. Rotate and flip. Yep. Excellent options there for rotating the image. And obviously, again, if you want to reset that crop, you just go back to the beginning. And we still have the straighten tool, shortcut A, where you can click and drag to specifically draw a line, which is very handy for horizons um, uh, to be able to crop uh, the image or adjust the angle of the image specific to a line. Uh, obviously, it can also be used for vertical lines as well, which is great. All right. So with spot removal, it works uh, pretty much in the same way. Um, it, we have obviously the size and feather and opacity there as well. So a few extra adjustments. Um, excellent. If we go down to, I'm just going to remove that. All right. Adjustment brush, very much the same. Uh, the main difference that we're going to see is down here we have what's called a hue adjustment. Uh, so you can, with a adjustment brush, make a hue adjustment to only specific parts of the image. Um, and the other really nice feature there is if you click on this use fine adjustment, then you, when you click and drag, it clicks and drags at a much slower rate. So it just means that you're getting a much finer adjustment, which is uh, a really good option. Uh, otherwise, if you unclick it, then it's the normal speed of quite quickly. Uh, excellent. All right, and double click takes it back to zero and uh, clicking and highlighting on that adjustment brush tab um, or that adjustment tab uh, on the actual image and then clicking delete will get rid of uh, get rid of that adjustment the same as always. Um, so further down here, saturation, sharpness, noise reduction, uh, all very similar. Excellent, graduated filter, pretty self-explanatory, radial filter, same sort of thing. Um, but obviously just using a filter in a different way rather than using an adjustment brush. All right, so the adjustments and changes to Adobe Camera Raw look pretty significant with this major layout change. And um, it certainly, I think, is going to help. Uh, while the fundamental structure and layout uh, hasn't really changed, there's certainly some improvements there that will allow you to uh, make more efficient use of your um, desktop space and, uh, and hopefully also help to speed up your workflow by just keeping tools close by um, uh, 
and uh, and super efficient in terms of knowing where everything is, uh, keeping everything together as opposed to laid out differently and on different parts of the screen. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to download uh, Adobe Camera Raw version 12.3, which is the new current version. And uh, hopefully you can, uh, with a bit of testing, enjoy the new version. And uh, hopefully it helps in your workflow and achieve your image outcomes. Thanks very much for stopping by. As always, questions in the comment area are welcome. And uh, hope you have a great day. Take care.